What is going on, my brothers and sisters? This is Steel Sermon in the house. Thursday morning with another video. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram, link in the description below. So the second half of the MLB season is underway. First half of the season, Pirates 41 and 49, which doesn't sound awful considering, you know, where we were this time last year, but considering we were 20 and 8 to begin the season. So if you want to do the math, go right ahead. I mean, we're 21 and 41 since that 20 and 8 start, which obviously is terrible. But instead of coming on here and ripping the Pirates apart, I'm going to come on here and be a little constructive, okay? Because the season's not lost. The season is still, you know, 72 games away from being done. And the best thing of all, we get O'Neill Cruz back probably at least within a month now. And it's not like we've completely lost the division. But my point is, there are a lot of ways that the Pirates can improve in both the lineup and in the pitching staff to have a better second half of the season. And I'm going to go over three of them right now. So, these are mostly due to the lineup and the outfield because we really kind of did address our biggest need with the pitching staff. So I really shouldn't have said pitching staff in the beginning because, you know, Rowanzi Contreras got demoted and we uh, took Paul Skeens in the draft, which I don't anticipate him to see him this season at all. I, I maybe anticipate him to see like a cup of coffee in the league next year, but that's besides the point. So these are my personal three things that the Pirates can do to improve in the second half. And I'm going to start with the least important to the most important. So number one for, so number three for me actually is stop giving Miguel and Duhar starts. Okay. Now we kind of did address this a little bit and Miguel and Duhar did, you know, hasn't really been in the lineup a lot lately. So this really isn't a concern, but it's still worth bringing up. At the very least, he needs to be moved into another role because he's been playing middle. Of the, he's been playing third base in the infield a lot. But if you absolutely have to use him, stop playing him at third base. He's had four starts in the outfield, and he just seems to strive there a little bit better. And this kind of bleeds into another thing that the Bucks can do. And the reason that we sent down Cannon Smith and Jigma back to AAA is because he wasn't getting regular reps in the outfield. And I feel like if Njigma could play could get a little bit more time and get brought back up, I feel like he could be a good outfielder, not a great one, but just a rotational guy at best. But then also you gotta figure, you know, what are you gonna do with guys like Jack Sawinski and guys like Henry Davis and and uh, Josh Palacios. Well, Henry Davis, we know, can play catcher and outfield. I'll get to Henry Davis in a little bit. So Jack Sawinski in right field has been mainly his natural position. And then Josh Palacios has been playing pretty well in the outfield as well. So it's like if you dump Miguel Andujar for good and you just bring him in as like a pinch hitter or a rotational guy, I feel like you strengthen your outfield a little bit more and you have, you know, to experiment a little bit more and battle for that right field position to see who's going to be better overall. Because right now, if you ask me, I feel like Henry Davis should be your right fielder. And I'll get to, well, I'll get to who is going to be catching in a little bit. But I feel like Henry Davis is the better candidate at right field. He doesn't commit as much errors. He plays smarter defensively. He has a better arm than Sawinski and Palacios do. So I feel like that's your winner right there. But in the meantime, you can't completely neglect guys like Sawinski and Palacios. But Miguel Andujar, and, you know, I just think he needs to stop getting starts for good. And then bring up Cannon Smith and Jigma, give him a second chance and see what he can do. So that's my number three right there for the Pirates. Number two, 
is figure out the middle of the infield. This is pretty self-explanatory because we knew we were going to have a massive deal and a mess to deal with when O'Neill Cruz got injured back on Easter. And like I said at the beginning, he's going to be out until at the very least early next month in August. And I think another big thing here you got to do is get rid of Rodolfo Castro. I I'm done with him. A lot of Pyre fans are done with him too. I mean, he's okay offensively, nothing great. He's just very average offensively. But number one, average is what we're not, is not what we're looking for here if you're taking this rebuild seriously. And Rodolfo Castro, even though he does pose a good necessity with being a switch hitter, he's just a very average hitter on top of that. And that's not what we're looking for here. And secondly, and most importantly, his defense is putrid. You know, I can't tell you how many times the Pirates have lost games this year because Rodolfo Castro has given up runs and he hasn't been playing in the middle of the infield well. Now, it's not the whole reason that we've lost games, but his sloppy defense has not been helping whatsoever. You know, so how do you fix this until O'Neill Cruz comes back at the very least? I think Tupacina Marcano should get some reps at shortstop, and he's been getting a few more reps in the middle of the infield. And to his credit, he's been doing really well. If that's the one thing that I give Ben Charrington a lot of credit for, it's that we won that trade with San Diego a couple years ago when we traded um, Adam Frazier to them, and we got Tupacina Marcano from them. And it's going to be a massive defensive upgrade for us, and it also doesn't it also doesn't hurt either that he's batting way better than Rodolfo Castro is. So, in my opinion, why not put Marcano at second base and then wait until O'Neill Cruz comes back, put him back at second or short, and then have Marcano just be like a rotational swing guy, you know? And then finally get rid of Rodolfo Castro. And then finally make Nick Gonzalez every day. Because we finally called up Nick Gonzalez. He's been flourishing in the middle of the infield. So what would you call up Nick Gonzalez for if you're not going to have him be every day? It just doesn't make sense. So my vision of the Pirates' middle of the infield when O'Neill Cruz is back is that O'Neill Cruz is going to be short. Gonzalez is going to be second with Marcano being a rotational swing guy or vice versa. You can't go wrong with either one. Regardless, though, you also have to be able to know your third base situation because I'm just going to say it as well. I'm done with Key Brian Hayes. Okay, I know he's a really good defensive player, but the dude is always on IL. In fact, that's just going to be my nickname for him from now on. From now on, it's just IL. The dude's always hurt. And you might be wondering, who's going to be a third base then? How about Jared Triolo? Jared Triolo, in the few starts that he's had at third base, has shown promise. I mean, sure, Key Brian, like I said, Key Brian Hayes is a great defensive third baseman, but. What good is it if he's just never going to be on the field because the dude's always hurt? That was a mass. That was a big mistake to pay him as early as we did. And Jared Triolo, like I said, really hasn't really has been doing pretty well. So I know now. Look, I know Key Brian Hayes is going to be every day at third base, and I know that most likely when he comes back, your your infield. At least your middle of the infield is going to look like something like Marcano and Gonzalez at second, Cruz at short, Hayes at third. But Jared Triolo, you can't rule him out either. But any way you look at it, Rodolfo Castro cannot be in this lineup anymore, in my personal opinion, if he can't play defense and he's just an average hitter. Because Marcano can do both. He plays better defense, he hits better. Same thing with Nick Gonzalez. And same thing with O'Neill Cruz. Odd man out is Castro. So that's my number two right there. Number one, and most importantly, bye-bye Austin Hedges. That's another guy. I know Austin Hedges was brought up for his defense, and I know that, you know, he's probably Shelton's favorite catcher, 
But that doesn't mean you reserve him in the catcher role from now on. And I'm not saying promote Andy Rodriguez just yet. As much as I would love to see Andy Rodriguez, the bare minimum needs to be taking Austin Hedges out of the starting catcher role and start putting Henry Davis in a catcher. I mean, you called up Henry Davis, and while he does play right field pretty well, the dude's also a catcher. So I say start giving Henry Davis some catching experience, and, you know, if it works out well, then you can call up Andy Rodriguez, see what he has behind the plate, and play musical chairs about who's going to be catcher like your rebuild is supposed to go, you know? And then if Andy proves to be better at catching than Henry Davis is, you stick him back in right field. I mean, it's a win-win either way with this. You're getting a massive upgrade at catcher, and you can dump Austin Hedges, who doesn't block well. When you're a catcher, you need to block well. And he doesn't hit either. Even for rock bottom standard, the dude doesn't hit. Now, I knew the Pirates knew what they were getting in his zero offensive value when we got Hedges, but... You know, it's still well below the Mendoza line. And Hedges is supposed and while Austin Hedges supposed backup Jason Delay is better, I don't know how sustainable Jason Delay is, at the very least. And he seems to be on par with Hedges, actually. Hedges doesn't has like zero def has like no defensive run saved, and Jason Delay does better what he's supposed to be doing. Hedges does have the edge over delay and blocking overall, but if we're talking about a small defensive difference, Hedges only has it just because he's caught more innings than delay. My point with that is that you have to get rid of Austin Hedges one way or another if you're going to take this catching seriously. Start putting Henry Davis behind the plate, see what he has a catcher, and then maybe towards the end of the season, give Andy Rodriguez the green light to call him up, stick him behind home plate, and if you absolutely have to keep one or the other between Hedges and DeLay, I'd keep Jason DeLay. Any way you look at it, Hedges has to go. So, is the season lost for the Pirates? Absolutely not. Does it look good? No. But I have to say, it's better than last year, because last year... This team was, I don't know, at like the 50 loss mark last year. And the fact that we're even still in this division slightly says a lot about, you know, what we've done this year. Because like I said, I mean, Mitch Keller and David Bednar have been carrying the load for the Bucks this year. And I think without those two, this team would be a lot worse than what we really are right now. But yeah, those are my three personal things that the Pirates need to do in order to improve in this second half and could possibly even finish above 500 because my last hope for the Bucks right now is that when O'Neill Cruz comes back, we get that spark of offense that we had, kind of like when we called him up and around this time last year, and the Pirates can start to you know click on offense a little bit more. Pirates return home from the break. We take on the San Francisco Giants. Uh, Three-game series, I believe, starting on Friday, which is tomorrow, as I'm recording this yesterday, which is today. I know that's a little confusing. I'm sorry, but you get the point. Pirates and the Giants, second half underway, and this is going to be a big second half for the Bucks, to say the very least. Let me know what you think down in the comments. How do you think the Pirates can improve in the second half of the season? This is Steel Sermon checking on out for the day. May God be with you.